session of the City Council to order. We have a big agenda. I have lots of people here who want to speak tonight, so let's get started. Our first call, uh, call to order, and Brandon Huckabee will lead us into two places. Thank you, sir. We have a presentation of an award to Steamville Parks and Recreation and Steamville ISD by the Texas Amateur Athletic Federation. Could you intend to skip the invocation? Here? I can't read. <laughs> we'll go ahead and do that. Come on up. We'll do that in a minute. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity. You betcha. My name is Mark Lord. I'm the executive director of Texas Amateur Athletic Federation. And I want all of y'all to know how lucky you are that I'm here to give this award in your city because this, the award we're given is the TAP Contributors Award. It's not to our members, but it's to an outside group that's being recognized by our member of making their job possible and as good as it is. And CB and Ashley do a fantastic job. They couldn't do it without them. Stephenville ISD facilities and support. And on behalf of the Texas Amateur Athletic Federation, I would like to present to you the Contributors Award for 2004. <laughs> it's not always this way in all cities. A lot of times there's this is ours, that's yours, it's y'all's tax dollars. This is how it's supposed to work. Thank you all very, very much. We've got some pictures. We're going to take some pictures here. Yeah, yeah, yeah but real close. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. McGee. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Al Nix is always good about pointing out my shortfalls. Which uh, there are many. Which are many, of course. <laughs> the Lord will tell you that. Uh, the next item we're going to go to is the invocation. And Wayne Hancock from the Cross Timber Church of Christ is here to lead us in a prayer. Let us pray. Most merciful Father, our Lord and King, ask for your special presence here this evening that you grant your knowledge and wisdom to all the members of this council and all the leaders of this city, and that they may lead this city in justice and in truth. May the decisions, ordinances, laws made, be made here be made for the good and welfare of all citizens of this community. We ask for your continued blessing upon this council, upon the city of Stephenville, upon the state of Texas, and these United States, that they may be a place where your justice reigns. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. And again, thanks to the Minister Alliance for always supplying us that opportunity. Next time is general citizen general discussion. Do we have anybody like to approach the city council? The general items we have specific issues. No, that's been canceled. No, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. We have one item that's I'll been canceled. Here. You could short out that. That one I wasn't. It wasn't my fault. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna. The next item was the Saint Gobain uh, inclusive playground equipment, and someone was sick at Saint Gobain wasn't able to be here tonight to present. So we'll get that at the next council meeting. General discussion. Anybody have anything you want to discuss with the city council? General items. If so, three minutes. Now, this is about Dublin Street. If it's that one, we'll add you to the list here. You're about Dublin. It's not about Dublin. You're about Dublin Street? Oh, yes. Okay, we're going we're gonna to come up here in a minute and call that specific item. Yours is not. No, sir. Three minutes. Tell, give us your name and your address. Okay, this is, I'm in Courtney Roach. My address is 820 North Charlotte Street, or Avenue, excuse me. Um, on Sunday, I had an incident that happened to my two-year-old at Purple Goat, and I understand it's out of city limits, but I just want to know if there is a, um, a safety regulation on playscapes in Erath County itself, because Olivia, my daughter, she was dangling by her head at nine feet on Purple Goat playscape. 
So I just want to know what I can do further to that. You want to address that, Alan? The, <clears throat> excuse me, the county may have some specific guidelines. If you'll give me a call, Courtney, okay, yes, sir. Uh, I'll get a hold of Judge uh, uh, Campos, Campos. And, okay. and find out what his regulations are. They may or they may not. If not, okay. I think the state of Texas probably does. Okay, perfect. And then not only was that, it was a 12 inch slot that she fell through, and then also there was like screws as well as like it wasn't just that safety concern there was multiple safety concerns mm -hmm. and usually i'm not the mom to like well, yeah, go ahead but yeah so i just need to want to make sure that's safe for everybody okay if you'll give me a call tomorrow okay. the next day okay. i'll, yes, I'll get a hold of judge camp thank you thank you thank you next item on the agenda is uh item number Questions for Alan. Do we have committee meetings scheduled for the 28th still? Yeah. Uh, no, sir. I think the committee meetings are the 21st or the 20th. No, they are the we changed it to September. Mm -hmm. They are the 28th. Okay. Yes, sir. Other questions? Can I hear a recommendation or a motion? I'll make a motion that we move the meeting to the 4th. Second. Second. Have a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Same sign opposed. Motion passes. Next item consider approval and ordinance amending the city of Steamville policy and procedure manual by adoption of chapter 413 mental health policy. Let the chief make that presentation. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, distinguished members of the council, effective September 1st of this year, a new law went into effect under SB 1359, codified under chapter 614 of the Texas Government Code, subchapter A1 requiring law enforcement agencies to establish a mental health leave policy for peace officers who are involved in a traumatic incident should they need to seek mental health um, assistance to recover from what they've had to deal with. And so there are certain guidelines related to, to the law there that have been uh, added to the, to the chapter there as, a, as an example there for you under, under chapter four, city of Stephenville, uh, 4.13 mental health leave we as a city have chosen to take that a step further and add firefighters, EMTs, our telecommunicators, and uh, public safety employees that may be involved in a traumatic incident where they either respond to, help with the investigation of, or deal with the aftermath of those type of incidents. In state law, it requires that it be confidential and it not be a punishment to the employee to take that leave to seek, for example, such as a police psychologist someone to help them become a productive member again and deal with what they have had to deal with and respond to. And so the state law requires last, as soon as practical after September 1st that this policy be established. And again, you have a sample of that in there and available for any questions. Questions for Chief or for Alan? Chief, do we have an existing policy that covers any of these items? No. Well, we. We have similar policy where we we basically somewhat done that kind of on our own, taking care of them when needed, and this just codifies it as a, a standalone policy. Okay. So we have been very good about it in the past. I thought but that we had, yes, but sir. this may formalize it perhaps. Correct. Absolutely it does. Yes, sir. Other questions? My question is since we modified the law or added to the policy, why did this not go to the committee, personnel committee? I believe it was discussed with Mr. Pendleton and he said to bring it to the council. I'm not absolutely sure of that. I believe we did do that. I'm looking for. But it didn't go through the personnel committee? No, sir. Okay. 
Any other well, questions? We can send it back through personnel committee. I mean, it's, it just says as soon as uh, after September 1st. Well, the only reason I ask, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I'm just saying that, that we're, it's one thing for us just to change the ordinance based on what the law says we have to do. And we added to that other personnel. So I thought it would be appropriate for the committee to look at that. <coughs> so anybody had disagree I with that? For that. Any, I mean, I don't mind taking a motion tonight, voting on it. Just that's my gut feeling. We ought to put it back in y'all have a problem with that I couldn't hear down here we said let's go ahead and send it to committee back uh -huh. to committee y'all agree with that sure. is that okay with you to do that we'll get it we'll have the next committee meeting when 28 28 well what's the law say we have to implement by it said as soon as practical after September 1st for peace officers only okay for peace officers only as soon as practical after September 1st so that'd be my recommendation Leanne? Oh, I just have one question. So there's nothing like this for fire department, EMS, all that? They don't have any, we don't have anything like that no, set for them? Okay. And the Texas Police Chiefs Association and, uh, and cities across the state are taking it upon themselves to extend it further beyond the peace officers okay. based on the totality of those responding to, for example, a fatality crash involving children, multiple individuals, different things like that, shootings, homicides, mm -hmm. that there will not be just peace officers responding to those incidents right. okay. or investigating them. I think it's probably a good idea. We just need to, I think we need to have a committee to look at it and yes. ask questions. Okay, we'll refer that back to committee. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next item, budget. Fiscal year 2021-2022 budget. Is that gonna be Monica or is it gonna be Justin? Be Monica. Um, we're going to kind of go to square one basics for a lot of the people out there that might have been looking and, and not have been following the whole budget process that's been going on for several months now. But um, every citizen in Stephenville that owns property gets a property tax bill from the um, county assessor's office, and that uh, is made up of several component rates. The city of Stephenville is one of the entities um, that our rate is part of that. We're about 21% of the, the total rate on the tax bill. And uh, what that does is that funds our general fund. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Which you can see on our general fund between our sales tax and our property tax, our ad valorem tax, we are about um, 80 or 75% of our general fund revenue when you add in the rest of our taxes like the mixed drinks taxes and our franchise fee taxes we're about 86 percent of the general fund revenues comes from taxes that money next slide please is spent on our general fund expenditures and as you can see our public safety which is our police fire and small amount of court is 50 percent 57 percent of our general fund expenditures um culture and rec is 18%, general government is 15%, our public works is 6%, and our development services is 4% of our total budget. And that's salaries, operating, capital expenditures, the, the whole ball of wax. So this year, we've got in our budget um, a, you skip the slide. This year we have in our budget um, an adopted uh, proposed tax rate of 0.4420. And so what is those tax dollars purchasing for our citizens? Um, in our public safety, there's a new traffic officer position. Um, we have replacement and equip five patrol units, equipment to make an existing unit a patrol unit, purchasing a radio and communication system for public safety, replacing an ambulance, replacing the self-contained breathing apparatus system for the fire department, replacing three cardiac monitors and repair and upgrades to the fire training facilities. In our culture and recreation, we have two new building and grounds maintenance positions to bring all our mowing in house, which conservatively should save us about 20,000 a year. We have um, mowers, a truck and a trailer for the building and grounds maintenance crew. 
replacing two mowers for the parks, replacing a mower and a tractor for the cemetery, picnic tables and shade structures for our Collins Street Trailhead, which is from our Parkland Dedication Funds, and $100,000 towards our Inclusion Playground, also from Parkland Dedication Funds, and some minor um, library and senior center improvements. Um, we also have where we're transferring uh, $1,174,069 from our general fund to our capital projects fund for our annual street maintenance and for Lockhart Road. <coughs> There's $60,000 for a skid steer for our street maintenance department and we're replacing a truck for our street maintenance crew. So that's what's in the budget this year, just kind of in a nutshell. Any questions? What do we, Stacy, tonight? We approve the ordinance for the budget. Yes. Okay. We need to go into the, the public hearing. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. We'll enter a public hearing on the budget. Does anyone like to come speak for or against the the budgets presented as Monica did tonight? Wave your hand. It's kind of like at an auction. You know, you get to stand up. You raise your hand. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> hearing, hearing none. I'll close the public hearing. Consider approval of an ordinance. Mayor, make the uh, motion to approve ordinance number twenty twenty one dash o dash twenty seven. Second that motion. Have a motion by Justin. A second. Who's second that? Leanne. Me. Okay. Both did. okay, I'll give Leanne. She had done much so far. <laughs> as far as motion. She's putting you on notice down there. She's way down at the end of the line. Kind of put a little, little humor in here. Have a motion and a second further discussion. Can we get a roll call vote? Yeah, we'll have a roll call vote. Place one. Yay. Two. Yay. Three. Yay. Four is absent tonight. Five. All right. Six. Yes. Seven. Yes. Eight. Right. Motion passes. Uh, seven yes, yes. Do I hear another ordinance? I'm sorry. No. Oh. No. I don't know if we were cheering or saying yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. Not in here. All right. Next item: consider approval of an ordinance adopting fiscal year 2021-22 fee schedule. Monica, do you have anything else on that one? No. This is a fee schedule that was included um, for our budget. There, there are several changes in it um, compared to last year. Uh, we did increase some parks and leisure fees. Uh, we um, increased some water and sewer rates and some things of those nature. And we just Questions for Monica. Monica, so this is different than the approval from last year's fee schedule that we approved that had a, a series of gradual changes? This did include for the water, well, for the sewer, um, we did include a 50, 50 cent base rate increase for every um, category of sewer customer. And then there was a 25 cent per thousand gallon. So um, that's different than what we did approve last year. And we still have the, I think coming on the, maybe the 28th as well, the uh, rate study from uh, Freeze and Nichols to go over with you. Other questions? The only change in the parks fees, we're actually just adding the non-resident fees, correct? I think most of the most of the resident fees the same. <coughs> there were there were a few ad changes in additional <coughs> fees added for small things. I think um, we did some temporary fencing mm -hmm. and some things yeah, of that some nature. New, some new items. Yeah. Right, but um, for the most part, it was just adding the non-resident fee. Yes. Anybody else? Here now, you do I have a motion, a second. Mayor, make the motion that we approve ordinance. Ordinance number 2021-0-28. There a second? Second. Second. <laughs> second. Quick on the trigger. We're going <laughs> to call Brandon a second on that one. He's not the other end. got the two ends here. Booked ended. All right. <laughs> Further discussion? Proceed to vote. All in favor say, oh, there's, there's a roll call vote as well? No, no. Stacy was wrong? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Thank you. Planning and Development Commission, Mr. Killen. Yes, sir. Mayor, Council. Uh, I have uh, three items for you tonight. The first one is applicant Barron. 
Stark uh, Engineers representing 555 Dublin Avenue LLC. They were requesting a replat of property at 555 Dublin. This is parcel R73140 of City Edition Block 72 and Block 73 parts of to the City of Stephenville, Urath County, Texas. They're requesting approval of a preliminary plat which is combining two parcels. Um, the applicant has submitted the plat with all the related submittals. Those are under review now by staff and uh, we're moving forward uh, on those reviews. The plat meets the requirements for uh, recordation. The Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, Commission convened on August 18th, 2021 and by unanimous vote recommended the City Council approve the plat. We have uh, maps included in the staff report for you and also Mayor and Council, uh, we have a letter of opposition from Ms. Cassie Petty and then also in your packet we have the plat for 55 Dublin. Uh, it is staff's opinion that this plat meets the legal requirements. Um, the recommendation tonight is that we approve the plat. If the plat is denied, it has to be denied with conditions where we cite the reference to the state law uh, that requires the, uh, the conditional approval for the plat. In other words, if they make the condition, if they, if we have any type of conditional uh, condition that we place on the plat for approval, we specify what the condition is, cite the reference to law. As soon as that is completed, then the plat would be up for um, approval. And so with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Any questions for Steve? Steve. <coughs> uh, when was all of this area rezoned? We know that it's uh, dated back to at least 2018 on the rezone. Um, and so that's, that's uh, what I have record of. According to the map that you presented us, there is a huge, huge section of, of Stephenville, not just this property, but uh, going all the way to Long Street, it looks like. Uh, in a lot of which is residential, single family residence. In the future land use plan, it says that this is single family, but in the current zoning, it's R3 multifamily. So I was trying to get an idea of when it was zoned for a large section that includes single family residents when it, when it became rezoned. Yes, sir, and we, we did look at that, and like I said, we have Records dating back to 2018, nothing uh, before 2018? that. 2018? That, that we could actually. Two years? Uh, Three years? Yes, sir. Uh, so prior to that, we were not able to find anything in the city records, but uh, we can continue to look at that. Again, this is a replat request, not a rezoning request. Right. Uh, and because of that, the, the zoning has already been established, and this is a permitted use for the, the current zone. And so the project falls under the permitted uses and, and therefore uh, tonight is really uh, just to consider the I understand that I'm trying to get a historical perspective on it. Understood. Uh, 2018 is as far as I can say that we actually have record of. Okay. Do you, uh, <clears throat> when will, will this come back in is when it's, uh, I mean I, I've looked at the picture of the plan and uh, and everything will it come back in? It shows one exit out of uh, an entry into the property, correct? And everything. Uh, <clears throat> if we go along with planning and zoning tonight and agree to this, will there be any changes to that in the future, or will there be uh, uh, the ingress and egress into this property will remain the same? What? During off the, of Dublin Street? Yes, sir. I, I believe during the development review process, of course, as staff uh, looks at this plat and goes through the project with the developer, if there are any shortcomings as far as uh, ordinance requirements, uh, things of that nature, then we will certainly make changes. This is a preliminary plat because it'll have to do certain public improvements and then we won't accept the final plat until the public improvements are completed and accepted. Uh, we have done some preliminary reviews of this project um, in pre-development meetings, and the 
single access into and out of meets the uh, requirement for the the entry throat uh, for this project so um, again we will look at that more closely as we go through the development review process uh, but in the early stages we think that this uh, this particular plat um, and the proposed project are, are so public certainly safety within the has confines. looked it through it yes sir <coughs> we've had uh, and signed off on we've had uh, multiple departments looking at it already yes sir Steve, thank you I'm sorry I mean, so just just to be sure I understand so if if there were to be a a denial a disapproval for any reason or a conditional approval there has to be a letter of the law that is the reason for that disapproval is that's that correct? correct that's a requirement of the local government code uh, which I believe is um, look, 212 <coughs> and, and so staff has reviewed everything and it fits, <coughs> it fits state law yes sir no, we, we believe the plot is, is a legally uh, binding document at this time that it meets the requirements of the city ordinance and state law thank you other questions here now we're going to enter into a public <coughs> hearing to address the replat and I'll be frank with you I've heard lots of comments lots of calls and so I encourage those who are calling to come up and speak their piece before the council and so if I have two requests up here one is for a Cassie Petty and it says she is represent are you re who's Cassie are you representing the neighborhood if if so you'll get well if you're gonna represent all five you go five minutes for the whole group but if you're rep if you're gonna speak on yourself then it can be three minutes for as many people that sign up to come speak so I, I mean I just want to make sure you're all aware of that so, nobody else want to come up and speak I'm Okay, so what, what y'all need to do is be sure there's a sign-up sheet over here. I need I need you to I fill out the. Up. Okay, for those. Okay, I've got. If you, I, I'm not with a group. I've signed up. For okay. Me All right. I don't know the group. Okay. I don't so think anybody else? Anybody down there speaking for me? I'm just speaking for me. If anybody else is going to speak, be sure that you fill out the form, and give it to to uh, Stacy, and she'll give it to me and make sure that we all recognize you so that you can speak your piece. So I have two requests so far, and I'm going to note it, note then that. Cassie is not speaking for a group, but speaking for herself, rather than the group. Otherwise, you're limited to five minutes for the whole group, okay? So I'll just give you three minutes. So Cassie, you want to come up and uh, tell us your name, your address, and... Is it okay if I say... Yeah. No, ma'am, I need you up here before the microphone okay. so we can record what you're saying. No, we got... No, we can't hear you from over there. I just wanted to speak to everyone. Give me your name and address so everybody will know who you are. Sorry. That's I'm okay. I'm Cassie Petty. Uh, my address is 975 Mesquite. Um, our community is a very small, very historic community. I will tell you that it's been there since 1930 that I have photographic documentation of. Um, <clears throat> the land that you're speaking of has actually been grazing land up until maybe 2016, 2017. Um, and I do know at that time when things started to change, I think Mr. Nix, your mom used to live in our neighborhood. We used to see her walk all the time. Um, our homes, my home has been in my family for four generations. And I don't think that um, this project is a safe part for this community. The access to in and out of our community will not even tolerate a large fire truck. If there are cars on either side of the street, which there always are because we have tiny lots, you could not get an emergency vehicle through that area. Adding 200 to 400 cars daily for kids to live there is gonna put the elderly people that walk, my kids, the smaller kids that are all walking to school and in that neighborhood regularly in jeopardy because the more traffic you have, the more accidents you have. There's only one entrance. It is on a dead curve of a very small street. There's already quite a bit of risk when you try to pull on to Alexander Road or Long Street. Long Street also doesn't tolerate that kind of traffic because of the narrowness of that area. And I would say that that property is also in a flood zone. And if I'm not mistaken, the code for the city, and I can't quote the code, but I did read it, if it's going to cause a risk of flooding or property damage to the nearby homes it is to be denied 
And when you build up that plat to house a multi-story unit, it will cause more flooding. Uh, Dublin Street already floods every time it ra rains. It floods significantly, comes up over the edge of the curbs and up towards the houses. Some of the houses have um, sewer waste that comes up into their homes when that happens. Um, I just think when you look at all of this, the community should be considered before building something like that. It is a very small area. It, it looks like a lot. It goes all the way down to the river at the park, but that is not a safe place to put that kind of a traffic load. It's just not safe. So we are asking for reconsideration of that and to consider the community. There's lots of places that we can build and allow for student housing, but that's not one of them that it's safe. That's my opinion, respectfully. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, I have questions for Cassie. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I also have a request from Suzanne. <clears throat> my name is Suzanne Stratman. I live at 955 Mesquite Street. It's not a street, it's a lane. <clears throat> it's not a street. It's a little lane. It's short, it's narrow. I agree with what the lady in the pink said about the getting vehicles on. We, we barely have parking for the people who live there, and we have no students. We have some young people who load the street up with uh, big vehicles. They can't, we can't, we can't handle any other traffic. I agree with, with what she said about trying to get onto Alexander and Long. The city itself needs to look at those corners. There's a decorative bush on, um, uh, right at Alexander and Count Street that needs to come down. The, the, the privacy fence looks like it, it, well, you have to pull out and lean to get onto Alexander to the left or the right. That looks like it could be on right of way for property. I don't know. You can't see past that fence. On Long, there's a tree that needs to come down. Those are the small things. I came here to find out where that traffic will come out onto our street from. I worried about that driveway, which looks like a legal, a legal driveway, but it's a driveway. Will you widen it? I don't know. Can you widen it? I don't know. I don't know anything about what you plan to do. I came here to say I was for it until Mr. Cook brought up the, the where is the traffic being put out. And when he said Dublin Street, I gasped, and I'm still gasping, because that is so ridiculous for all the reasons she said. I thought it would improve the neighborhood. They landscape, they will have reasonable management, it will make it look better. Um, I thought it was a good idea. I thought you would make curb cuts on Alexander, but I don't even know if this pro property abuts Alexander, does it? Uh, well, see, okay, so it's, it's dumb. This is really not a very good idea. I have lived on, on this street for the seven years I've been in this city, and it's been a major challenge for a lot of reasons. I won't go into all of them. It has to do with boundaries, people not understanding boundaries. It has to do with aesthetic things, people junking up the neighborhood. It has to do with a lot of funny stuff that you get in neighborhoods. But mostly, I saw the city, the city approve what happened at the end of my street a few years ago. They allowed that former property <coughs> owner of 555 and all of that, somebody put up a big fence and then he has that they allowed him to put in a really rough camp. God knows what goes on over there, but he ran it as a, uh, some kind of concern, industrial. I cannot tell you for the past two or three years how many flatbed trucks loaded with whatever, day and night, I'm not talking about three in the afternoon, I'm talking about at one o'clock in the morning. You never see them in the daylight, only in the dark back and forth and back and forth. I cannot tell you what has gone on on that street and you allowed it. And it's still going on. And people live in that little shack. Thank you. And I don't understand that either. So I ask you, now I'm against it. I don't know how I will put that, I, I, who to write to, is it too late? I'm totally against this. You cannot use Dublin Street and that neighborhood that way. That is unconscionable. It ought to be really the city ought to go up in arms about it. We are, we are part of Stephenville. We're not tar tar um, Tarletonville over there, and we're not Garrisonville. Is this we're not, okay? We have a council. I'm sorry, I, that whole thing about Dublin Street got my hair up. 
You may have any questions for her, for Susan. Hearing none, go on to the next one is Noni. I hope you'll state your name and address. <coughs> Noni Castleman Reed, 1008 Count Street and 602 Alexander. Count Street joins it and is right next door. And I appreciate for the time, I'm not really prepared, mainly safety. And she hit it, I mean, this is constitutional. Um, just the safety with the for the emergency vehicles won't be able to get in and out with more than with hundreds of cars coming out of that small entrance into that small neighborhood i, I just couldn't imagine and then i'm right next door because um, there'll be cars parked on the road and stephenville is a neat town and i hope that you guys um, keep that into consideration and it's just too small of a drive meaning um, I live there. If I need an emergency vehicle at, you know, a certain time during the day, they're not going to be able to come in with several hundred cars coming in and out of that small drive. And so I appreciate your time. Thank you. Maybe any questions for Noni? Oh, can I ask one question? Because yes, my friend, want, who will pay for the public works? Like all the, you know, you have to upgrade the sewer and everything? Yeah. The developer will. The developer, the developer will? Okay. But that's uh, real secondary. Safety is most important <coughs> and just uh, respect. Quality of life. Quality of life. Thank you. Thank you, Noni. Brandy. State your name and your address, please. I'm Brandy <coughs> Prieto, and I live at 1010 Counts. And I'm not good at this public speaking thing. But we've lived there for 26 years. We've raised our family there. Your parents live there. And it's a very quiet street. It's, that's where, it, we don't have a fire hydrant anywhere. <clears throat> the, like she says, I mean, what are we going to do with all of this? We're taking out a big part of pasture land that's down by the river. Taking all of that away to put eight apartment buildings up in our little tiny neighborhood. And it's going to drive the, the property values down. We want to retire here. We raised our kids here in Stephenville. <clears throat> we love Stephenville. We love Tarleton. Our kids went to Tarleton. But doing this in such a small neighborhood, it's just not fair to us as a community. It's going to change everything. And I, please, please consider this because we just want to retire there and have what we have, not it be taken from us. After working ourselves to death for 26 years to try to pay everything off, you know, it's, it's just not easy. You just can't get up and sell everything and move. It's our home. It is our home. And I have people that live next door to me that have been there longer even than I have. But please just consider this. This is emotional for me thanks thank you ma'am anybody have any questions for brandy as i the, some of the folks who i spoke with on the phone uh indicated i told them the same thing that steve said and that is at this point it's a replat and since the zoning was approved prior uh there's the city doesn't have the ability to not approve the replat there will be a development opportunity where some of these issues, and that's why the ones I spoke with encourage you to come speak about them because all those things will, have, will be addressed through Steve's committee or Steve's office and through the development committee. And I wanted also the developers here and he's a very responsible person and will be one. I, I thought it needed to hear, he needed to hear y'all's comments. And so I think every one of those issues, he can address a bunch of them. I don't know, it's not gonna do everything that you've asked. But I think part of that, he can address those uh, and the group that's here tonight. So I appreciate you all speaking. There will be another opportunity to do the same. Uh, will, how long will it take Steve for that? Well, it really have to develop or once he has the development plans, I guess. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, so once, once we uh, <clears throat> go through the civil plan review and get over all the comments back to the developer and we have everything lined out at that point, then he would be authorized to begin construction on that once the civil plans are accepted. So 
uh, as quickly as they have been moving and as efficient as they have been on their submittals, I really think that's probably within the next, I would think easily within 60 to 90 days. Is that what y'all consider days? thinking about 60 to 90 days? Oh, I, I got a nod on that, yes. Okay, all right. Can I ask a question? Uh, I don't the public, know I'm allowed to ask a question. Well, the public hearing is over with, but I'll let you make a comment, yes. We haven't closed it yet. I, I have not closed the public hearing yet. Right. That, I did that on purpose. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> or Randy. I'd like to know why projects that cannot be completed within 60 days are not process was with like you said within is it 200 feet steve how 200 many feet, yes. 200 feet all those notifications do go out so everybody within 200 feet should have received a notification if you didn't i want you to go see him after the meetings are with and tell him what happened because we fell down on the we fell down somehow so if that's the case he needs to know that so he can figure out what his problem is yes ma'am that was we were notified for the replab but not the rezoning in the, well that that don't we steve's telling you we don't we're having difficulty finding when all that happened and how it happened. So how and is that legitimate if there's no proof of when it happened and when it occurred? Well, the council made a decision, and they, the council had the PNC had to approve it, and the city had to approve it as well. Council did. So that process is done, and what we are here today is to take the replant and to have the developer here tonight hear what you had to say, the concerns. And I would hope that developer will get with y'all and help deal with some of the things. Some of the issues that will be addressed are things like if there is a flooding, that was one of the comments that was made, there's a flooding problem. There will be a study that shows that. And if it is, the developer will have to fix that problem. They don't have the ability not to. If there's, you know, there's some other things that have to be done, they'll help address those problems. The, where we are right today is, by law, he has the right to do what he's doing. And, I, and the people I spoke with on the phone, I was real clear with, about that. What needed to happen tonight was the council and the developer need to hear your concerns. And going forward, we'll make sure that you are heard. Whether or not the development is what you like or not, I can't say that. That's, there's some laws there. And some, they, there's some ability for the developer to make a decision on what is best use of his property. And so that's where we are today. So I'm glad y'all came. I, I, I promised that I would give an opportunity for those to speak who wanted to speak. And so we'd hear that because as the first concern was at PNZ, we weren't offered the opportunity to speak. Well, right or wrong, whether that happened or not, there was an opportunity tonight to give the right for people to sit up and say, here's my opinion. And so we've heard that and it will be at least one more chance. Mayor, I, I, I spoke of when I thought the project may begin on the 90 day deal. Uh, if this plat is approved tonight, then the project will begin. We will not come back on the plat until the project is completed and we have to get the final plat approved and recorded. Until the project is completed. The project, the okay. civil improvements are completed. So there's no other opportunity for them to speak then? And this would be the, the last review before we get into the project. Yes. Okay. Then I would appreciate, Steve, give me direction to sit with these people and make sure the developer understands all the issues and if there is some issues i think that discussing flooding is one of the examples i have a relative that lives on that street and i do know about the flooding that occurs and i also know about the the traffic issues i mean that individual that owned it buried a six an 18 wheeler in front of her house because it was raining so hard, hard and that took some while to get that fixed so i those are some issues we need to deal with now we want to make sure the citizens are heard and the developer understands what those problems are yes sir can I ask one question, Mayor? Yes, ma'am. Who will be responsible when emergency vehicles won't be able to get in and something traumatic happens? Who Ultimately, it'll be the chief of police and the city administrator and the fire chief. They'll be, they will be held accountable. For if they've approved this plan and the plan isn't implemented, if it's implemented correctly, yes, they're accountable for that. Yes, ma'am. 
One last comment, and we're going to close public hearing. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, will the city improve the streets? You mean Dublin and Count yeah, Street? Ski and then maybe the Long Street is about will be looked at. We're okay. in the project process of looking at Long Street and completely rebuilding Long Street. Because I think that's what's going to have to happen. Well, Long Street will be at some point, Alan. We've looked at that in what budget process? We're going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, we're going to look at that in further detail on the 28th. We've been, staff's been instructed to bring that and several other projects back to council. For a committee or for council? I uh, believe it's for the finance committee maybe? For what? A Justin, session. for a work session. Are we supposed to bring the projects back to your committee or are we taking it to council? We're, um, the utility, we, we're meeting on the 28th right. with everything. We're having that committee meeting. We're not bringing that straight back to council. Okay. We asked if it needed to go to public works first right. And right. Alan said, no, it doesn't need to go That's right. back to public That's correct. That's correct. Okay, one last comment. Yes, ma'am. Can you explain to me the plots, the two plots? I don't know. Is it all on 55 Dublin? 55 Dublin? Mm -hmm. You want to answer this yeah. question, Steve? This property was actually not platted. Uh, it had been resurveyed. And so when the submittal came in, we actually uh, called the county and asked why are we seeing this on this one parcel on our map and even on the county map that uh, we don't have record of it coming through as a as a replat or a plat with the city and it had been resurveyed uh, multiple times to take lots into can, into one property but it never really gone through the platting process so uh, the developers recognized that and wanted to bring it to the city and make sure that it was platted properly and so um, I mean that, that's how we ended up here. So the plot is two, maybe yes. two Okay, we're this. I just want to say. Okay, ma'am, ma'am, hold, hold, hold on, hold on, ma'am. You haven't been recognized, ma'am. Ma'am, you haven't been recognized. Please. I know, but. Uh, please, ma'am. Oh, no, it's not. It's not your last chance. Yes, ma'am. Any other comments? We'll take your advice. I will go by and I went by there. I drove by there and looked at it today. Whoever's voting, come look. Okay. I'm going to close another other public comments. If not, I'm going to close the public hearing and hear a motion. To consider approval of preliminary plat. Mayor, can I ask a question? You can ask a question. Uh, does this, <coughs> can this be tabled yes. un until uh, Steve meets with these people and gathers additional information to their concerns and then brings it back to us. And also, I do not understand the, the reason I asked the historical perspective on the zoning thing was frankly because I thought we keep records on everything. You know there's a record of this being rezoned. So I'd like to know when it was. And, and if I can help a little bit with that question, this is not much. Steve had asked me to help them locate it. Back when some of these older properties were rezoned, they would adopt a zoning map, like a general area where it'd say zoning map. We can't find what that map was. So when this property was initially zoned, it was zoned as part of that map, I assume. I don't know where to find that map. It may be in the basement, but the, that initial zoning before it was rezoned in 2018, came from some kind of general zoning in the city. Okay. So it, it, this zoning was done years and yes. years yeah. and years ago. Years. And it I didn't change that. in 2018. No. Is that what you're saying? It didn't change in 2018 yeah. is what you're I, saying. I, I don't believe it changed <coughs> in 2018. Uh, but at some point, nearly everything that's that's come in is all one, that we have of particularly in residential area. Family problem. Yeah. So that was that was uh, my point of thing. Mayor, I'd move the that we table year? this until, May, uh, until uh, well, hold on a second. I didn't mean to interject. Uh, there we? is a, a statute that says when a plat is submitted, um, we have the governing body has 30 days to approve and act on the or act on the plat. If we don't act on it, then it's automatically approved within 30 days. PNZ met on uh, August 18th. 
And so if we table this, we will have to act quickly. And then to bring it back, I'm, I'm afraid we'd have to go through the same legal requirements to, to put notice out again. And I don't see how we could do that within a 30-day window. So you have 30 days, which would make it, what, September the 18th? Yes, sir. But you would it's have automatically to. Approved. Or then it's automatically approved. Yes, sir. And that's state statute. Is it 30 days from when PNZ acted on it or 30 it's days from, from when it was presented to us? A submittal. It's, it's a very tight time. Go ahead. Okay. So we had 30 days okay. from PNZ's action. Okay. 30 days from PNZ's Which was when? 18th. Uh, PNZ was on August 18th. August 18th. So we have until September the 18th? I, I mean, to do it. 17th. September 7th, October, or September 17th. September 17th. Did you make a motion? Which is not very much. I made a motion to table until such a time that we, uh, that Steve could uh, meet with people and and, uh, and then get back to us with uh, answers to these things. When will be the next, I, when will be the next council meeting? I will. Meeting? Is he making a motion? He's so, made a motion, yes. Okay. I made a motion to table. Yeah, we have a motion on the floor. Stacy, when's our next meeting? <laughs> When, are we, when will this body be back together? I wouldn't call a regular meeting at any Next time together. So we're going to be back on the 14th. That's when we have the council meeting on the public hearing tax rate. So next next Tuesday. Okay, I have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? Can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. So we're tabling. He's, the motion is to table it until the 14th? To Correct. table it until Steve gets back with the citizens and address, discuss their issues. And then once he's done that, to bring it back at the next council meeting or if, if we don't bring it up, on the 18th it's approved. Is that correct, Steve? Before the 18th. 17th. Well, on the 18th it's approved. Uh, I'm, Mr. Thomas, help me on this uh, if you can. Um, I think Mr. King's looking at the statute and he's saying that there is a 30-day window for PNZ to act and then a 30-day window for the Council to act. If that's the case, then we would actually uh, be bumped into October, uh, but I would need to... Once PNZ has acted, they will Right. From so we have 30 days okay. from the 18th of August. So, so again, okay, so that's correct. We have till the 17th of September. Okay, so that'd be our last opportunity to meet. So we have a motion on the floor. Let me restate it. Motion on the floor is to table it until Steve has gotten with the citizens and, and brought it back to council. Well, if he did And bring it back to council on the 14th. I guess we could, I could make that happen. I mean, if, it, if they have a recommendation, we, I can get it on the agenda of the 14th. But that's, that, I don't think that's part of the agenda. The motion, I don't think, could be back on the 14th. Do you have a motion? That was the motion. Do I hear a second? Yes, I'm sorry. That didn't. So we're, we're tabling it for another month? Or we're no, we're tabling until it until next Tuesday. Tuesday. On the 14th. Oh, then I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second by Leanne. Further discussion? I'd like to have no, a discussion. No discussion. Oh. It's not debatable. It's not debatable? It takes two-thirds of a vote. It takes two-thirds vote to, to table a motion. Okay. Okay. Then we're going to call a roll call vote. No, I just, no, no discussion? No discussion. No discussion. Leanne? The motion is... To table it until next Tuesday. Yes. Place one's aye. Place two? No. Place two? No. no. Place three is no? No. Four? Yes. That's two, three, two, five? Yes. All right, I guess you're yes. seven. Yes. Okay, eight? No. No. Okay, the motion fails. Uh, it's, so the motion, and motion to table fails? Uh, I will make a motion to approve case RP2021-005. have a motion on the floor by Brandon to Second. approve it. And we can have discussion on this. Yes, we can. Okay. I'm not heartless. I'm not inhumane. I'm not going to give you fake, fake hope. It's a legal state law of where we're at. The mistake with this happened whenever this was rezoned long before most of us were on council and that that is why I preach every week about being involved in your community and coming to your meetings and knowing what's going on there is there is nothing this council this council is not building these apartments this council cannot do anything but follow the law and 
the law states that it is a plat that has to be followed. I'm the chairman of plan development. We will make sure that they follow every flood plan. We will make sure that they flood every every ordinance. Flood, follow. follow. Not flood. <laughs> flood. Not flood. So you're they, will, they will follow every <laughs> ordinance and guideline that there is put in place. But I don't want to give you fake hope. This is illegal. It, it's, it's the law. And we've got to follow it. And I encourage you to be involved um, because it matters every day. And this is a circumstance where it mattered. 20 years ago when this was when this was changed the zoning was changed so, no the, the last record the, that's the last, last record, record but it, it was, was not changed, changed in that. 2018 so, so okay we have, that's, we have a that's we have a motion. discussion of why we have a motion, motion. second for further discussion uh, sorry. yeah I'll, I'll just say <clears throat> kind of echoing what what Brandon said it for me it comes down to this is what we legally have to do we don't really have a choice so tabling it wasn't going to do anything but delay what we were legally obligated to do. I understand your concerns. I lived on Long Street in Miss Elston's, basically in her backyard for about four years. You did. I did. Um, so I understand. I understand your concerns about the activities that have gone over there because that was in my backyard. Uh, so I, it's still going I, it absolutely. So I, I, I agree. I mean, I, I understand your concerns. At this point, I just don't know that there's anything we can do to stop what this developer is wanting to do. He's, he's within his rights. Other discussion? I just got to say the statute of limitations has run on any action that was taken about zoning after two years. And we're talking about something that you didn't find anything of in 2018, which is two, two and a half years, three years. Okay. So it would be a statute of limitations problem to oppose anything about zoning at this time. Okay, thank you. I, we have a motion and a second. I, I Any can, other discussion? I yes, can sir. sympathize, Mayor, because I grew up on Count Street. I, I lived there from about 1964 until my wife took me away in 1975. So I understand the traffic concerns. It's a narrow street. It's very difficult to get up and down. With, with the minimal amount of housing that's there now. I understand that. Sadly, our hands are tied by state configuration and state ordinance and state requirements, but I, I'm not without sympathy for you, but I don't know how to help in this circumstance. Thank you. Thank you. I echo that. I, I live in a neighborhood similar to these neighborhoods. I live in an older neighborhood right down here on Belknap, so I understand that, and you see these things go up, and, and you know, we all have concerns about those when we live in these neighborhoods. And so I I understand what you're going through. And there's another, there's one of these going up right down the street from me um, at the end of Collins. So, and so that's, you live in these old neighborhoods. It's, it's a risk, I guess, when there's empty land around you. So um, I know that Steve and his staff will do everything they can to make sure this thing happens the way it should happen and we get everything done the way it should and um, you know our, our hands are tied so well thank you for listening yes, yes. thank you so much yeah. thank you yeah, yeah. Mayor, thank you yeah. well Steve real quick on the traffic issues I mean it, it's not like they can just go start doing stuff I mean we're going to go through a process right that they've got to meet as it relates to getting the proper utilities <coughs> any requirements that that as a developer that they're going to have to do it's not that they can just throw it up and everything's as is oh, no, sir. Like we we go through an extensive review we even have a, a third party firm that looks at everything that is submitted so we we have a pretty pretty extensive uh, review of everything with fire uh, development services public works um, and so we have a lot of eyes on it and we we enforce the local ordinances, uh, the engineering standards manual. Um, we do drainage studies, have drainage studies submitted. Um, and that the impacts has to, the, engineer the flooding the on project. other property too, is what he states. So. Yeah. Engineer for the project um, has to give us an assessment on the impact and the traffic impact analysis. Uh, and so all of that is taken in consideration as the development moves forward. Uh, the zoning, you know, as we mentioned, was uh, passed years ago whenever that was um, and you know, at this point we're, we're just looking at the replat and uh, there's the state just doesn't give us a lot of room to, to deviate from how that's approved. Right. Steve, um, 
all of that information will be provided to you by their engineers is that correct yes sir and that will be done over the next you're estimating 60 today 90 days yes sir they they will uh, as they send submittals to us it comes into uh, the permits department and then we distribute that out to all of the reviewing departments and then we get our comments back to them we try to turn comments back in a two-week period um, so we we uh, make it a priority on every every development that comes through to try to try to put those on the top of the, of the list and make sure we get timely responses back on the projects we have a motion to second on the floor we'll proceed to vote all in favor say aye aye, aye. same son opposed no aye. okay motion passes I don't think there was a need for a roll call on that was there okay thank you sir now Suzanne the comment that you made, the uh, things that are going on there, there's a man right over there, his name is Chief Dan Harris. I, I, I don't want to waste your time telling you how many times I've spoken to the police. Make it I want everybody who has that co same concern. His name is Chief Dan Harris. They have told me they don't have time for me. Well, if that's the case, then you come see me and Mr. Harris and I will have that conversation again. I assure you that's not what he's going to tell you this time. He's a, his, you have a, you have a different man on the block. They come to my house, it's always, they treat me like a company. Well, that's the man right there. I'm going to encourage you to visit with him. Mr. Harris, would you raise your, wave your hand at her, make sure she knows who you are. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Next item, cause number RP 2021-06. Yes, sir. Uh, this property you have seen before, it's uh, property owner Taylor Canute with Harbin Street LLC is requesting a replat of property located at 0 S Harbin Drive, parcel 73763, a south side addition. It's block 19, lot 15 of the city of Stephenville, or Urath County, Texas. He's, uh, we're looking at the preliminary approval for a replat for a planned development. On July 21st, the city council approved the rezoning of the parcel to the PD. Uh, but that approval was contingent upon um, a preliminary replat or preliminary plat being brought back. Uh, the applicant has submitted a preliminary plat along with the appropriate submittals um, for staff review. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission met on August 18th and by unanimous vote recommended the City Council approve the plat. Um, Mayor, in, in this uh, during this process, um, as I mentioned, it was requested that the developer come back and provide more detail. And so if I can walk you through some of the documents in your packet. Um, of course, we have the maps, but uh, I want to get to the things that uh, Mr. Knute and his team have worked on. So uh, in your packet, you have a floor plan and elevation rendering of the property. Uh, of what they intend these projects or the, the apartments to look like. Uh, we have a timeline where they have provided quite a bit of detail uh, relating to the project as far as the development plan, civil improvements, general construction. Uh, also in your packet, we have a, a plat showing what this property will look like. Um, preliminary plat again, this is roughly 50 townhome parcels. Um, entry onto Swan and onto Harbin Street. Uh, Lot one, as you see on the plat, is 2.63 acres. That will remain B2 zoning, uh, with the remaining 4.79 acres, I believe, is going to be uh, for the actual PD for the townhomes. We have the development plan uh, with some very specific details on the properties as far as what the floor plans will look like, the square footage, um, price range for the homes. Uh, they get into some of the discussion on uh, the lot development regulation, landscaping, um, they look at the parking regulations, they, they have adequate parking for the project. Uh, archi architectural development standards, they give us a list of um, <coughs> items that are materials that they'll be using uh, and even specified uh, the use of masonry uh, at 90%. They, they mention the roof structure uh, and then um, also the design elevations on in that document. They have provided us a, a picture of a sign that they believe will be very similar to what they erect for this property. Um, and then we also have an elevation rendering 
and a picture of what the uh, fence will look like that se will separate the townhome development from the B2 uh, side. And then also, sir, we have the, uh, uh, again, another rendering of the plat, a little more formal looking of, uh, rendering of the plat. And so, uh, Mayor Council, what I'd like to point out on this is that the Canutes have spent you know, an adequate amount of time putting together a lot of detail, uh, trying to make sure that we can answer all the questions that you may have from the last meeting. I think this is a, a, a great effort on their part and, and really something I hope that we can use as a template moving forward. I, um, there's a lot of detail in there that we can probably go further into if the council would like. And, and of course, we have the developers here if you have any questions. Thank you. Questions for Steve. Steve, the, the sign rendering that we have, will that be on Harbin or on Swan? I believe that's going to be at both entrances. Both? Okay. At one time, Steve, and this may be an Allen question, we also had a requirement that there are some flood water problems on the back side of that property uh, by, the, by the train track. <clears throat> yes, sir. We are, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we're talking to Mr. Canute about obtaining a, a uh, an easement for that creek, number one. Number two, we do have some, some money that was allocated for downstream uh, uh, protection for that property. It, it'll be included in the the Harbin Drive drainage piece that comes through the cemetery and that that will have a positive impact on his property or on this this property. So yes, sir, uh, we're we are going to fulfill our obligation in that. And and again, we're talking to Mr. Canute about obtaining a, a, a an easement not only for where he's got to come in, but so on the other side well. too. Yes, sir. Okay. Other questions? <clears throat> May I enter to a public hearing at this point? Anybody want to speak in, in favor of the request? You want to visit? I think. Uh, See, now I need you to stand up here and introduce yourself. It's probably good for you to do that. Right, Danny? Give your name and address, please. Uh, Taylor Canute, 373 North Floral Street in Stephenville here. I um, appreciate the description <coughs> Steve gave. Um, and uh, like he said, we've been working on this for a while. And I think we've, we've provided a lot of detail and given what a, a pretty good snapshot of what this development is going to be. Um, the city's also been very good to work with throughout this entire process and um, has already turned around comments on the initial engineering that was submitted so um, everything from our end is looking good and uh, we're just excited to hopefully be starting as soon as possible on this question rich connect these are gonna be for rent or for sale uh all for sale i'm assuming there will be investors that right. come buy them for investment properties but our intention as a developer is to sell each individual lot and unit it'll be similar to the ones you'll buy in the post yes. office Oh, they did a good job there. Other questions? Anybody else want to speak in favor of the proposal? You want to speak in opposition? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing and consider approval of the preliminary plat of the property located at South Harbin Drive, zero South Harbin Drive. I would like to make a motion to approve RP 2021-006. Second. I'll second. Well, everybody jumped on yeah. that one, Malcolm. <laughs> I'm going to pick it's Alan. Nice to be loved, huh? <laughs> Mr. Nix got to that one. All right, any further discussion? I, about yes, I sir. would just like to say thank you. I, I you know, thank you for the work you've said. A lot of hard work. Uh, appreciate the, the blood, sweat, and tears and treasure you are putting in the community with uh, another cool project because I, I think if you go look at what's done over here, it's it's pretty neat. Yeah. Changing the landscape for, a, for the betterment. Well, so. and, and maybe setting the stage to make things a little smoother going forward. So thank y'all. Yeah. Proceed to vote all in favor, say aye. 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 Same sign opposed. Motion passes. Thank y'all. Appreciate y'all doing that. Thank you very thank much. You. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Next item, public <coughs> hearing. Steve, you had two more. <laughs> yes, sir. It's a private uh, joke, guys. Everybody else. <laughs> okay. Um, the... The next is the uh, 
zoning ordinance review uh, amending the zoning ordinance for the addition of a new zoning district to be classified as integrated housing uh, district r 2.5 so um, this has gone to give a little history of i think you're all familiar with it we had a, a project come uh, for r3 development and that was a discussion that brought a lot of reservation from the community and there was a uh, direction from the council to the development services committee to look at uh, some of the trending housing styles and how we can maybe bring those uh, into some of the the neighborhoods without it being so um, invasive I guess um, as an R3 development so when we started looking at the R3 developments and listening to the comments they were right there the R3 uh, zoning ordinance gives a list of permitted uses and some of those go way beyond just the R3 your typical R3 apartment uh, and so um, with the input from the Development Services Committee, we started looking at that a little more closely, and we, we, what we did was we pulled the townhome requirements out of R3 and made R3 basically for uh, those list of permitted uses plus the apartment complexes. And so that would be the R3 ordinance that we're looking at. The R2.5 ordinance, we basically took portions of R3 and created an R2.5. And what that would be is for this integrated housing that we're talking about, and it would go into the residential districts plus B1, B3, and we, we might want to consider uh, downtown as well. Uh, and so as we looked at that, um, there were some things that we could accomplish uh, with this R2.5 that would separate uh, an R2.5, make it a little less invasive because the density for these uh, type of developments would be much less than the R3. And so in, the, in your uh, staff report, uh, we accomplished a few things with this R2.5 zoning, uh, <clears throat> and I'll run through those quickly. Townhome requirements are removed from the R3, as I mentioned. There will be a, clean, uh, a clear distinction on the density requirements for new uh, zoning classification for townhomes, and we're seeing a lot of submittals related to townhomes. Uh, so that density will be set at 14 units per acre, and you can pair that to an R3 apartment uh, which is 24 uh, units per acre. You can see there's a, a pretty pretty clear line of delineation. The R2.5 will allow for single-family townhomes and duplex-style housing. Um, there will be variations. Uh, any variations from the density setback requirements, we created a uh, almost like a, a planned development process, but it would be a little less, uh, uh, I guess, a little simpler. For the developer uh, to come to PNZ with the site plan, show what they were proposing the density to be, and then it would come to uh, council for approval. The difference there is that the R3 zoning would require any type of variance like that to go through the Board of Adjustments. And so uh, this just removes one additional step for the developer if they had a, an appropriate R2.5. Uh, proposal that just was a little tied on the density or perhaps had some setback issues that they needed to look at. Um, parking requirements for R3. Currently the parking requirements for R3 is, is two per unit. And what we're seeing across town and in many cities we're very similar to that have college that are college towns. These um, apartments come in and they lease the bed. Uh, and so even though it's two spaces per unit and you have 100 units, that's 200, 200 spaces, but what you're really dealing with is upwards of four to 500 uh, potential vehicles coming to the site, not counting the, the visitors. So we wanted to increase that parking requirement. Um, the, also with this, uh, one distinction between the R3 zoning and the R2.5, R3 zoning will be typically your, your rented apartments on a single parcel whereas the r2.5 would be more of individually sold individually platted townhomes similar to what the canutes were proposing with their plan development and so with this um, i think the development services committee and council is very uh, uh, forward thinking when we when we were uh, charged to look at this and i think we have a good solution out there that that helps us protect the integrity of those neighborhoods uh, that, that people feel very closely about, maybe reduce the, uh, uh, the density some uh, where the, the project doesn't seem uh, to change the dynamics of the neighborhood so much. And so uh, trying to be succinct, trying to move quickly. I know you guys had a lot on your plate tonight. 
uh, but we would be uh, very happy to answer any questions for you. Questions for Stephen? Mr. Killen, one of the things that concerns me is there's a lot of, of uh, single family residence neighborhoods now that the R3 certainly doesn't fit. This may be a compromise for that, but it still, to me, challenges those R1 neighborhoods to maintain their integrity. Uh, it adds a significant amount of traffic and other things that they do not experience as R1 neighborhoods. And the long-term effect of this, I'm afraid, will be some of those townhomes, if, if they are installed in some of those neighborhoods 20 years from now, may not be as nice as they look when they're first constructed and first occupied. Those things concern me, and the, the owner-occupant of a, of a single family generally stays and or the new owner continues to maintain the property, but the townhomes, I'm afraid, are not going to have that. I know that's not something you have to concern necessarily, but it's something that I think I need to be concerned with when I look at something that's going to be a long-term and, and a significant long-term change, in my opinion. I appreciate y'all's work on this, and I know that y'all have tried to put the, the best package together that you could, but it still, it still concerns me about the long-term effect on some of our older neighborhoods especially. Anybody else? I want to say thanks, Brandon, for participating and getting it done. Sir. Anybody else? Hearing none, we're going to have a public hearing on the proposed amendment to creating the R2.5. Anybody want to speak in favor of the change? Anybody want to speak in opposition to the change? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing. Consider approval of an ordinance. <coughs> I'd like to make a motion to consider approval of ordinance 29. Uh, amending the city of code ordinance uh, with the following changes I would like to um, add downtown into the um, uh, 5.8 or 5.8 uh, description we've got uh, resident district B1 neighborhood B3 central business I would I like to add downtown there and then one additional change, I would like to add all the setbacks to 15 feet so that there is consistency there. There was a uh, duplex we had at 25 and everything else at 15, so just to add consistency to the frontages of the property. Okay, I have a motion to, um, to adopt the new ordinance, but adding to 5.8 the word downtown. Yes, sir. And to amend the setbacks to all be 15 feet. Is that restate? Uh, yes, sir. Are you okay with that? Yes, sir. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay, Gerald, I got Gerald second on that one. Further discussion? There are none to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Same sign opposed. No, I passed. think that was made by the, that second one was an amendment. We got to vote on the amendment oh. to the amendment first and then vote on the <coughs> other amendment. <coughs> So we have to vote on so just the amendment. No, you, you just You're made amending, a motion the, amending with the original motion. He I made a motion. Amend. He made I, I a mean, motion no. to amend the ordinance. The ordinance. The ordinance. Okay. okay. The yeah, I, th I think we're okay. I think yeah, we're okay. Yeah, I think you are too. All right. All, let's vote again because I had a bunch of talking. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Same sign opposed. No. Motion passes. Thank you. Next item. Yes, Mayor, the uh, in council. The the next item would basically just be the sister ordinance that we we created. Um, to, as I mentioned, we pulled portions out of R3, created an R2.5, and so this would be the sister ordinance to that, um, basically just having the R3 without the townhome requirements. Uh, townhomes would be completely in R2.5. Questions for Steve? Hearing none, we'll open for public hearing. Anybody want to speak in favor of the amendment? Want to speak in opposition? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing and proceed. I uh, ask if there's a, a motion. Make a motion to consider approval of the ordinance amending the City of Steamboat Code of Ordinance number 30. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Seems unopposed. No. Motion passes. Whew. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I told you if you ever got it less than 10, 30 minutes, I'd take him to dinner. Um, Development Services Committee, Mr. Huckabee. All right, I'll go fast. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Development Services Committee <coughs> met on August the 31st to discuss uh, our sign ordinance. Um, we discussed ordinance related to murals. Uh, we've had a, a, some some people wanting to do murals uh, about Erath County, different things uh, around the downtown area. Um, so we had that discussion. Um, and do, do you want to sure. bring us what we got? We made some changes and recommendations to bring to council. Yes, sir. The uh, sorry about that. The the ordinance revisions that we're looking at have to do with the amount of verbiage um, limitation on a mural. Uh, it's currently at 10%. Um, and so uh, a lot of these murals now are very artistic. And the one we were looking at would not have been approved under the current ordinance because of the it had Erath County going all the way across the, the uh, elevation, uh, which is taking up, the sign's taking up most of the elevation. So well beyond the 10%. So that's one of the revisions. The second revision would be related to the, uh, the mural cannot have off-premise advertising. And so this mural actually had sponsorships with logos. Um, it was at about 10 to 15%. I believe the council suggested that we limit that to 15%. Um, and so with that, we believe that the uh, restrictions will still be in place, but not quite as uh, stringent as they are now, and perhaps we'll see more of these signs uh, across the city. And so this will go to PNZ and then come back to us. So, thanks, sir. Good, good old government red tape. Back there you go. <laughs> Efficiency. Thank you, Steve. And that Mr. is all for development services. Mr. Cook. Mr. Mayor, we have two positions open on uh, the Senior Citizen Advisory Board <coughs> due to resignations. And we have two applicants that the our committee would like to present to the council. For place six, uh, term ending in 2022, I uh, recommend Dana Worrell. And for place three, uh, term ending in 2023, Debbie Watson. Both have been active, uh, both, uh, particularly Ms. Watson has been uh, very active in the Senior Citizen Center, but so has been in the world. Both of them had, I had uh, uh, said that they would, uh, uh, they'd like to volunteer for a Senior Citizen Advisory Board. It was their first choice. Uh, the committee met and today and we recommend that to the council. Do you make that as a motion? That is a motion, sir. I'll second that, Mayor. I have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Are your, are your people here tonight? You want to introduce them? Uh, is No, I think she's left. She no, was no. here earlier. She was. Okay. All right, so we have a motion and a second on the floor. Discussion? Proceed to vote all in favor, say aye. 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 Same sign opposed. Motion passes. Mr. Cook, anything aye. else on your committee report? That's it, sir. Thank you. Appreciate you. Mr. Haskey, you've been invited to bids. <laughs> we had she couldn't wait. Couldn't wait. Uh, the committee meeting met. Uh, the committee met on August 17th. A discussion was held about the need to reconstruct Long Street. Uh, after discussion, it was determined that the staff would bring the item back, along with several other significant projects, and uh, so that the course of action on how to address in the short term could be discussed. Staff, staff was directed to bring a list of projects and estimated probable costs to the budget meeting on the 31st. Uh, we did meet. Uh, that was our final budget work session. Uh, Alan, I think you have a list of some of the, the other items that we discussed. I do. Mr. Haskey and, and other members of the council, the uh, list of projects that we discussed or, or that we'll, we're bringing back for the 28th is uh, from the utility fund. We're talking about phase three of the east side sewer, uh, the Long Street Utilities replacement and road construction, 536 acre well field construction, transmission line for the 536 well field, and a US 281 elevated storage tank. You'll notice that the, the uh, ground storage and the airport stump pump station are not listed in that list of projects. It's listed in under the ARPA funding. Um, 
the, the total of those projects is about $21 million. Uh, we've also, we also talked about uh, additional ball fields for NYC. Uh, the estimates came in between a half million and $2.5 million, and so we're trying to hammer those down. We're going to work to get those down. Well, yeah, we're going to work to get those down. Um, as well as, as uh, we've discussed the, the potential for a new senior, center, senior citizen center. Um, there are going to be meetings later this week, uh, next week, uh, and next week to, to hammer the, the costs down to get more engineers' opinions of probable cost uh, and uh, uh, to look at different ways that, that some of the projects can be built for a more reasonable price. Um, and and so we're going to also be meeting the, the following week with our, our financial advisor and bond council to discuss all uh, alternative ways that we can fund things and things like that. And then we'll bring all that back to you on the 28th. That concludes the finance committee report. Financial reports, Monica. <coughs> Mayor, Council, this is the uh, budget review for the period ending July 31st, 2021. Um, our financial in indicators are as or better than I would have anticipated. For our property tax, we received um, 32000 in the month of July, resulting in 146000 or 2.25% over the funds collected through last July. The $6.62 million collected fiscal year to date is 99.64% of the budget, um, which is very close to what I had anticipated. For our sales tax, we received 614000 in sales tax in July, resulting in $1.04 million, or 20.03% more than the funds collected through last July. The $6.25 million collected fiscal year to date is 100.17% um, of the $6.24 million budgeted, which is higher than the 80.91% um, that <clears throat> we had anticipated. And the budgeted? We say anticipate, you mean budgeted. That's correct. Uh, well, it's not the total budget because our budget is broken down per period, so it's what we had budgeted to that period. I see. <clears throat> the target budget for operating revenue is $24.2 million. We received $25 million in revenue fiscal year to date, resulting in $829,000 over our target, target budget due to our sales tax and our service charges. The target budget for our operating expenditures is $17.4 million. We expended $16.4 million fiscal year to date, which is $1 million under our target budget. Our operating revenue received last year was $23.7 million compared to the current year's $25 million, resulting in $1.3 million increase due to property taxes, sales taxes, and service charges. And our operating expenditures last year were $15.46 million compared to the current year's $16.42 million which is 959,000 increase due to costs associated with COVID-19 prevention, damage claims, wages, recreation supplies, professional fees, advertising, Mula Fest, and our gateway planning. Are there any questions? And of that expense, how much of that is that COVID relief money? Is that 959? Is that part of that 1.4? No, I'll have to go back and look because I don't have it off the top of my head. If you'd bring it back to us, I'd preserve send it to us an email. I'll send it an email. Questions for Monica? Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate mm -hmm. you. Jeff, economic development. There's no CEDA report other than what you hear in executive Okay. All right. Mr. Mayor, um, I don't know if you're aware, but Jeff's father passed away. Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm aware. Okay, next item is consent agenda. I've already been asked to remove items 30 and 31. Anybody else? Okay, let's vote on the rest of them then. Uh, by a motion on the consent agenda, other than items 30 and 31. Mayor, I make the motion to approve <coughs> consent agenda. Okay, all in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Same time opposed. Motion passes. Items 30 and 31. <coughs> Ricky? Uh, I just asked for both of these to be. Um, removed one of them one of them I've, 
I've already had some conversations with staff, so I understand it, but I want to make sure everybody else does because uh, they're both significant expenditures that were not budgeted, so I just want to be sure we have a full discussion on that. Okay. <coughs> you want to have that discussion now? Sure. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, Nick will discuss <coughs> both of these items. The backflow prevention CSI professional services proposal uh, as well as the Long Street Reconstruction Professional Services proposal. Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, the item number 30 is the backflow cross connection control item. This particular item is an agreement with Hardin Associates to perform customer service inspections and what that is is a look at the protection of the public water system to make sure that backflow prevention devices are in fact in place. Now the ordinance uh, requiring this, I'm sorry, the state of Texas requirement uh, came into effect in 1996. Now customer service inspections are being performed on new construction by the building inspector but there are a significant number of businesses that may have come into effect prior to 1996 or been in business longer than that rather and uh, there are some businesses that perhaps have remodeled and not given the city the opportunity to inspect so this particular agreement with Hardin Associates provides for the customer service inspections to be completed to gain state compliance as well as protect the uh, public water system this came about after an inspection from TCEQ of the public water system and this is one of the items that was identified. I'm glad to answer any questions you have. So it's individual customer backflows. That's correct. So yeah. the customer no longer goes to an independent contractor to get it done. You're going to do it for them. Or no. This is an inspection of the internal workings of the plumbing. So while the city does have a contract with a company that provides the platform for you as a customer to call a plumber and have a backflow uh, test performed that platform is in place so that the plumber can then take the results of that test and upload it but there is not a requirement or not a requirement in the contract with that other company to come in and actually perform those inspections but this will not take the place of me having to call to get my backflow prevented issue. that's correct this that's correct. this is just to help us be in compliance because we send the letters out but then we don't follow up yes well what I'll say is that I talked in layman terms there. right so, so this, this is to help us get in compliance with the state right this will this will go in and check um, certain businesses um, uh, medical facilities veterinarian type facilities and make sure that they're in compliance with the state code okay you've just mentioned businesses but I thought I heard an indication of residences too. Well, it, that's certainly an option both. for them to perform. So now, if we're there looking is, at both? Hardin Associates will have the ability to, to do, do that. Both. To do both. That is correct. Yes, sir. But our inspectors will continue to monitor new construction before it's uh, approved. That's correct. Okay. Again, that is performed by the building inspector on new construction so these are is the requirement for these companies to be having these to be having these inspections performed annually biannually something like that or this is just a covering the city from a TCEQ standpoint it, it is a bit of an insurance policy to ensure that those facilities that are not checked or that do not submit reports um, the city has the ability to go in and check and make sure that a, a cross contaminant a cross connection does not exist or make provisions to address it if one does so is this is any of this cost passed on to the customer as part of their compliance requirements or is it just borne by the utility fund during new construction it's just part of the the building now <coughs> coming in afterwards uh, certainly all that's on the table for uh, private business to come into compliance with with the code now 
if I read this correctly, physical impact summary is like fifty thousand dollars per year. Well, this is a one time. One time. Yes, this is. But a it's one not time. in the budget this year. That is correct. That we just passed. That is correct. Okay. Why? That's a great question. The the TCEQ requires us to perform these customer service inspections. I understand that. But, I mean, why wasn't it included in the budget? I mean, recommended by staff to the budget? Because it came late in the game. <laughs> okay. Uh, he's been working with TCEQ and the response and all those things all summer. So we just recently got all that sorted out. I requested the meeting with Harden Associates to discuss the program uh, from a comprehensive approach from both the front end and the back end. We currently have 300 that are listed as non-compliant that haven't been inspected. Uh, and so I want to engage their services uh, to get that done so that we remain in compliance. With state so taxes. if they, if we send these people out, this company out to do an inspection, mm -hmm. someone has not been compliant, meaning they've been sent the notice that you've got to, you're supposed to do this test, they haven't done the test, what are we doing to the citizen who didn't, didn't meet the ordinance, the mm -hmm. requirement? We would try to bring them into compliance, but state law gets very specific. I understand, but what's the city do that's we're spending $50,000 to enforce what we already tell people they need to be doing? Is that right? We're not in. We're not enforcing. We're not enforcing. That's my question. That's the We're not enforcing. And my question is, how are we going to enforce it? How are we going to enforce it? I mean, what we're saying is we're just going to go out there and start doing it. If you haven't done it, we'll do it for you to get ourselves in compliance. And it costs us $50,000 to do it. They you should pay for your it. water off if you're not compliant. No, we're not. We don't do that. We never do that, remember? <laughs> Will with TCEQ find you? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. In, in this particular what, case, we came to it, then yes, sir, that would be the, the bush option here. on the table. Well, well, wouldn't we, if, if we've not had, my question is, if I I have 40-something of those 300 uh -huh. inspections, and if I don't turn in an inspection, we send these people out, surely at least we're going to charge me that inspection fee that that sit that, that person charges us the, yes. the reimbursement yeah. cost. Yeah, we're fifty thousand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll end up recouping that cost. And so we have an ordinance or a process to the, do that. Each inspection is one hundred and fifty dollars. Yes, we'll recoup that one hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, and I'd like for you to let us know how you're going to recoup it. So I don't know. We haven't ever shut off water. We've never done any of that kind of stuff. So I mean, it's the chances of it getting it are slim, I think. And so I don't have a problem with the contract, Jason. My yes, question sir. is. What we're doing is we're telling, we're not enforcing something. The question is, what should we not be enforcing? Should we be enforcing it instead, somehow? It's not a question. It's, we, we have to but enforce I, it. But I, we don't have the person to enforce it. Yes. We don't gotcha. have somebody following up. We send the we automated have someone, generated. We don't have someone we, to do the inspections. We send the letters. This person's not going to do the inspections. They're following up to make sure that the inspections get done. You're still going to have to call level okay. Namco, whoever yes. to do your inspection but this person is following up we currently have a system in place that we send the letter and notice out <clears throat> that you're supposed to but there's no follow-up on that so this service if I'm wrong this service is to help us get in compliance with those 300 and something mm -hmm. citizens that yes there has to be repercussions of some sort shutting water off it has something. to be that. So my question is that's then, a TCU Q, Q requirement. It, are we charging the appropriate fee to recoup the cost? There is no. Is one fifty You're right paying number. a private You're paying business. A private to do it. No, no, no. This, this well, is a mandate. We're paying. No, no, that's no. just what. One hundred sixty-six dollars so per. Base answer that would be we're going to have some analysis as we enter into this to make sure that, that we're recouping our cost. And if we see some deficiencies there, then we'll come back and ask for an adjustment to ensure that we are. So we're paying someone to go say, you need to do an inspection. Well, it's comprehensive from the front end to the back end. So it's not, not it's just not the back just end. The it's also on the front end on what's called that customer service inspection. And that was a learning curve for me. That's a specific term used in that industry that's a, a TCEQ compliant kind of thing. And so there it's is another. It's a mandated expense that we have to do. It's an unfunded. It's an unfunded. It's another unfunded mandated expense that we have to do. Yes, most powerful organization in Texas. There's, there's, there's a lot of those. Yeah. 
I mean, there's not any this guy's still not doing the inspection. The client, the homeowner's still going to have to call that irrigation license irrigation company to do it. Okay. Any other questions? All right. I guess we, uh, should, we should take each of the items as we pull them off individually. So. Do we have a motion to approve the professional service agreement with Hardin and Associates to conduct customer service inspections? So moved. Ricky makes a motion. Second that. Next makes a second more discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Same aye. sign opposed. Motion passes. Number 31. Okay. Number 31. This is the contract with Friesen Nichols as directed in our August 31st budget work session to bring forward a professional services agreement for the reconstruction of Long Street. This is the reconstruction of Long from Graham to Alexander. Graham to Race will comply with the recently passed Brick Street Ordinance Thank and we'll have brick put in. This, uh, this professional services agreement um, accounts for the replacement of the dilapidated water and sewer that's under there as well as coordination with uh, the gas company that is, you know, has utilities in there as well. So the design cost is $594,700. That estimated construction cost is approximately $5 million. One of the bigger pieces of that, including the water and sewer, is a look at the drainage that goes through there, the replacement, again, the replacement of the utilities, but the inclusion of ADA uh, accessible sidewalks. Both sides or one? Both sides. Again, all that's up for debate. When you get the price tag, we can structure that with alternates, but <laughs> we need to have the design put in place as well. You sure give Mr. Nix first about that. <laughs> <laughs> and the, I'm sorry, go ahead. The timeline for the design is approximately nine months because of the, uh, it is extensive. Uh, there is some, some stormwater analysis as well. The timeline for construction is 12 months after it goes out for bid. So, so bids will go out when, if we approve it tonight? Mayor June, you would have the design put in. You'd advertise that job. Being a large job, you probably want to advertise that for 30 days, much like we're doing Harbin right now. Once that award comes through, you'd probably have 30 days for bonds and insurance to come in. That is standard as well. Your timeline for construction will be, uh, therefore, August or September of 2023, completion. Okay. So the funds for this 594700 would come out of the utilities fund balance, correct? And I understand we're going to have a discussion about that on the 28th. Right. Other questions? But if we approve it tonight, we're approving that money, so. That's correct. So it would come out of the fund balance right now. It'll come out of somewhere, yes. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the problem. That's, that's, that's why I wanted to discuss it. So it will come yes, out sir. of fund balance. Uh, yes, sir. For now. At this point. Then yes. we, if we were to issue COs for construction, we could pay the fund balance back for this through that CO. That is correct. correct. You, can, you can do a reimbursement of yourself for soft costs. Okay. But this will, have, this will give us a much better idea of cost when we get ready to issue, should we issue COs. We would have a much... It will give you a, a, an accurate indication of the cost so that you can evaluate funding mechanisms if, okay. if you wish to proceed. You were that much better than I did. Is okay. there, uh, and I guess the possibility, is part of the ARPA funds in? Yes, sir. Yes. 2.6 million. Okay. Then change. That was some discussion, too, was the possibility of that soft cost be funded by the ARPA funds. Yes, sir. And it can. Yeah. It can or cannot? It can. Okay. But it still can be reimbursed off if rates as, as well. Paying yourself back. We'll get the hard cost but we'll, rates. We'll, but soft cost. Soft cost. Free money. Okay. Further discussion? Do I hear a motion? F and I will have a graduated pay structure on this as they work they will issue invoices. It's not all due at one time, I guess is my question. That's correct. There is a timeline that identifies <coughs> which percent plans will come through. There's also a liquidated damages clause in here to ensure that they're delivered on time. Okay. Good. Mayor, a motion. Mayor, make a motion to approve the professional service agreement with Freeze and Nichols. A second. Second. A motion is second. Any discussion? Proceed to vote all in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes. All right. Comments by city manager. 
Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, remind, I, we talked about this first part, pretty much all of them tonight. Uh, Tuesday the 14th uh, is a meeting to discuss the, the tax rate, to vote on the tax rate. Uh, Tuesday the 28th is our committee meeting. October the 4th is our, our regular meeting for next month. I wanted to remind everybody I'll be out beginning this, this uh, uh, Friday and I'll be out for, for two weeks. Um, also, coffee with Congressman Williams is Thursday at 8 a.m. at the Cold Smoke Craft House. It's right next to the Barefoot Outfitters uh, on Washington across the street from, from Tarleton. It used to be uh, the other coffee shop. Sorry? Well, I wasn't going to mention their competitor's oh, name, but just the other coffee shop. <laughs> uh, also, I, I wanted to talk to you. So many times we we say we work with other agencies, and, and we don't really get an opportunity to tell you how. Uh, we received a call today from from some folks at, at Tarleton State. They have many students currently on COVID restrictions. Some of those students do not have access to Wi-Fi from their dorms. Uh, that we were asked if there was any way we could help. We have Wi-Fi in the, the Cowboy Plaza as well as at, at Splashville and the parks or the amphitheater. We have informed uh, the Tarleton folks that, that so long as COVID protocols are followed, uh, that their students are more than welcome, as anybody is, to use the, uh, the Wi-Fi at those locations. And. Uh, that was one of those things where the question came in, we made the, made the answer, and, and everybody's happy about it. So I want you guys to be aware of that. Thank you. <clears throat> Leanne, comments? Justin. Uh, I just want to send our thoughts and prayers out to uh, the fire department and, uh, yes. and that, that family. I know that's a tight-knit group, and we're praying for them. So. Uh, I just want to commend Kelly uh, for it seems like she's been thinking out of the box a little bit and going out and finding some funds, uh, some additional funds from uh, organizations, and that's something we haven't seen in, in a while. And so thank you for doing that and, uh, and helping to further things down at the park uh, with some creative funding mechanisms. Good job. Uh, <clears throat> Mayor, uh, on uh, Saturday, the 11th, uh, it's going to be a memorial recognition ceremony, and uh, and it's the 20th anniversary of 9-11, and it'll be from 10 to 10.30 at Tarleton State. Field of flags will be on display. Um, the um, It's at the O.A. Grant Amphitheater. It, uh, there will, and as a matter of fact, I think Dan... Harris is going to be the principal speaker, and uh, it'll be a time of remembrance for a tragedy that uh, uh, was the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001, and Stephenville's way to uh, commemorate that. So I just wanted to remind everyone of that. <coughs> Thank you. Just my monthly reminder, it was, it was good to have people here and engaged in their local community and it's important every day uh, in every meeting um, because you never know what it's going to impact so uh, um, it's a, it's important to be involved and be engaged and ask questions every one of these people up here uh, will answer your phone call and, and, and discuss things with you so please don't ever hesitate to to call uh, and Again, condolences to the fire department family. Um, and uh, Absolutely. that's it. You know, there's any time that someone loses a family member, I can speak from personal experience, it's not easy. And it was the day before yesterday, that's when Jeff's father passed, is that correct? Yeah. And so Jeff Sanfers, if you hadn't heard, his, his father passed after uh, some illnesses. And so we want to keep him in our prayers. and. Uh, we're going to be visiting about one of a couple of these projects here in a little bit. So, Jeff, we'll be thinking about you here in just a few minutes. Uh, with that, uh, we'll now adjourn into executive session.
And just for information purposes, there are several items. Uh, Judge, we're going to talk about you first. So if you want to be ready to come back there, we'll, so you and your wife can leave. I beg your pardon. <laughs> we're going to talk about you first here. So we all come on back here, and we'll, we'll invite you back in the meeting here after we get started. With that, it is 7.20, and we will adjourn into executive session. We'll be back.
back into City Council from Executive Session. We have some items to uh, address tonight, so first item. Uh, item 34. Hey, which one's that? Which one was 34? Just in economic development, Project Blue. Okay. So, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Mayor, I uh, make a motion that we uh, approve uh, for staff to negotiate economic development incentives agreement as discussed in executive session with Project Blue. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, proceed to the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Same time opposed, motion passes. Project rooftop. rooftop. Mayor, I move that we authorize staff to negotiate development incentives with Project Rooftop. I have a second. second. I have a second. Further discussion? Proceed to the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Same time opposed, motion passes. Next item. Who, who took the the uh, uh, judge? Eight hundred. No. Mm -hmm. no. Lillian. The, all right. Uh, Mayor, make a motion to approve the exchange of the eight hundred block of North Lillian for consideration as discussed in executive session. Have a motion. I have a second. Proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Seems unopposed. Motion passes. Personal matters. Delivery evaluation of the city judge. Uh, Mr. Mayor, make the. Motion we approve the renewal of contract for the municipal judge with Richard Patronus for a period of two years. Your second? Second. second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Seems not opposed. Motion passes. One last item. No, oh, that we don't have to do the next one, right? No. no. Okay. Go ahead. Anything else? There were no other items to be discussed in public from executive session, so it is nine twenty three and we will stay on the marathon. You will.